Dr. Paul here with a quick video about encoparesis. Now that's a big word that just means your child, usually as children with encoparesis, has experienced very painful bowel movements. Now they don't want to go, so they're holding their stool. And when they do that, it just gets larger and harder, making it more difficult to pass bowel movements. So the child with encoparesis is avoiding bowel movements. I've had kids come in, they haven't had a bowel movement in two weeks. And when they do go, they're clogging up the toilet. It's large, it's hard, it's painful to pass. What are you going to do? Well, let me tell you, uh, the reason for it is simply this. You've had such a painful experience with a bowel movement in the past, you know, with your anus expanding and tearing, that you want nothing to do with passing a bowel movement. You might be two, three, four, five, six. I've even seen kids as old as eight or ten struggle with this issue because it hurts so bad to pass the bowel movement they don't want to. Well, the longer you hold it in, the job of your colon is to pull water out of the stool so you don't lose all your water in your poop. So the longer you hold it, the harder it gets. How are we going to help that child pass these bowel movements so that they can get back to normal? Well, I want to explain one thing about this. Your anus, we'll, we'll say that this is the anus, has two muscles. This is the external sphincter and then this next finger here represents an internal sphincter. So imagine this. The external sphincter is the one you can pinch it, right? If you've got to go and you, you're looking for a bathroom, you're holding it. That's this muscle right here, just holding it. But it's this internal sphincter that's really responsible for most of the control of our bowel movements. You can't go through the whole day with your mind 100% focused on holding it, right? It's not going to happen. So the child who has a huge stool sitting there and they don't want to pass it, eventually loses control of that internal sphincter. And so now the only way they can keep from having an accident or passing some stool is to focus on that external sphincter. Well, that's impossible. So periodically they have smears, they have actual full bowel movements that just end up in their pants. And they've sort of become so desensitized to any feeling in their anus and their rectum that they're not even aware of it. And you can say, how could that be? If you've had to live with that constant pressure, you actually eventually just lose that sensation. So the key to solving this problem is getting your child soft and keeping them soft. They have to be soft for two, three months. Sometimes you've got to go through a long phase of diarrhea almost before that tone. So think of the rectum now and the anus has been dilated huge and we want it to regain its tone so that it can now do its normal function of, con of containing stool and releasing it when on demand, when you want to go to the bathroom. So we've got to get them soft for a while so they no longer have pain when they're passing bowel movements. We've got to keep them soft so that the tone returns and eventually they will regain that control. 99% will. The 1% I'll tell you about at the end, a special little project, uh, uh, a way of helping them regain that control so everybody ultimately learns how to poop without having problems of soiling. It's not going to be forever. So for 99% of you, what do you do? Sorry it took me so long to get there. We, to keep the stool soft, you've got to avoid the foods that are constipating. Generally that's dairy. Dairy, cheese, milk, yogurt, ice cream, cheese is the worst. So get the dairy out of your diet. If your child is on anything that has extra iron, iron is extremely constipating. High fiber, which you normally think of as necessary for bulking up the stool. If you're already huge, bulked up, hard stools, the high, high fiber diet could actually cause you more problems and you need lots and lots of fluids. I'll tell you, even though all of that's great and you need to do it, it usually won't be enough because your kids Think of a log jam of huge stool through the colon, up around. It's just, you know, we have got to get them cleaned out. And that's the process that's mostly so difficult for these children. So we've got to lubricate. I like to use mineral oil. You can ask for it. It's over the counter. You don't need a prescription. You can take, uh, you can take a cup of mineral oil. Please don't do that. But I mean, as far as safety, if you drank a cup of mineral oil, it will just leak out your bottom and it's going to lubricate as it goes. But start with a tablespoon. Mix it into some pudding or mix it into something that they're going to eat because drinking straight mineral oil is yuck. That's a yuck. Um, so you take your mineral oil and then if you're not able to 
get enough fluid in there, the stool is still hard, I would use something like Miralax or Glycolax. This isn't going to be for life. This is during that acute phase. This is a white powder that just sucks water into the gut. It's such a large molecule, it's not absorbed into your body. And um, those of you who might be older and have had to have a colonoscopy, they'll give you a full bottle of Miralax or Glycolax to drink in two hours, and it just poof, flushes you out. So again, you're going to titrate how much Miralax you give them so that the stool is soft, almost diarrhea, and it's going to have to stay that way, folks, sometimes for a few weeks to get them totally cleaned out and to be trusting once again that they can have soft, manageable bowel movements. So you're going to do mineral oil to lubricate, Miralax or Glycolax to add water to the, to the stool so it's softer. And as a very last resort, you can do a glycerin suppository. They make adult size, pediatric size. You're just going to put this glycerin pop it into their anus. You can put a little lubrication on it, Vaseline or whatever. Pop it in until it disappears, maybe once a day after they get home from school if they're school age. And that lubricates from below so that hopefully, remember, they may still have that huge stool. They can pass it. It's lubricated. I'm not a fan of enemas where you're sticking something in and squeezing a bunch of water or, or, or electrolytes or whatever. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's usually not necessary, I guess, and it's a little more traumatic. So you can manage this with the mineral oil, the Miralax or Glycolax, a glycerin suppository. Avoid the foods that are triggering the constipation. Drink lots and lots of water and you should be fine. Now there's that 1% who it doesn't matter what you do, they have lost that tone in that inner sphincter. I have a physical therapist here in the Portland area who is now doing bowel training with a special program to retrain that muscle. It's ingenious and uh, we'll make a referral if you need it. Um, it's brilliant, okay? And, and I would have to, we're going to have to invite them and interview them so that they can speak themselves of how they do this. There used to be a, a PhD who worked with one of the gastroenterologists in town that used to put a probe in the anus and the probe was hooked up to a train and when the right muscle fired, the train would move and kids would learn how, relearn how to use that muscle. But there is now a current physical therapy pelvic floor rehab program here in the Portland area. For those of you who have kids who are suffering, we'll provide a link to that program. And 99% um, of you should be able to handle this at home. Thanks for watching. Please send your questions, uh, share this, give us your likes. Thanks for watching. I'm Dr. Paul.